Okay, so this is lecture 26. Okay, and the last thing we've been seeing is working with this discrete time model to see how to equalize a channel with ISI. Right? I took this model where M of Z is monic causal, loosely minimum phase, and you have white Gaussian noise adding to produce ZK. And we saw some equalizer structures. The first structure we saw was the maximum likelihood sequence detector, which works when mu is definitely finite, but not only finite, but quite less. Okay, we want to have some other other equalizers which will work for longer longer mu as well. Okay, so the first option we studied was what I called as zero forcing linear equalizer. Okay, so the structure there is very very simple. Simply take zk, then do what? pass it through 1 over mz okay so what you obtain out is xk you know this is going to be sk plus plus what some n prime k okay so that's what it's going to be and you run it through a slicer okay so i'm going to call denote it like this a slicer this is like notation it's called slicer this is basically a symbol for any thresholding device okay so if you, you can see what is this what is this plot i've done here so thresholding device for what modulation bpsk right so that's the picture that's drawn but it actually represents a general slicer for any modulation you might have any decision region you are enforcing for your decoder okay so that's what you do you produce a set of k so this is zero forcing linear equalizer okay and we saw an expression for the figure of merit so so the reason why figure of merit is uh, important is figure of merit directly gives you the probability of error. So in this case, probability of error is easy to evaluate, right? So, so we're doing simply xk, which is sk plus some noise, signal plus noise, all discrete. So you, you know q function and pairwise error probability will be fairly accurate. Okay. And we went through and computed the variance of n prime of k, and we found that that was n naught by two times the arithmetic mean of one by SH of e j theta. Okay, so that's very crucial. So, so if you're worried about why this SH of e j theta suddenly shows up, you can see if you go before, if you, if you look at this M of Z model closely, what's actually happening? What's actually happening here is what? 1 by gamma square M star 1 by Z star. And then this was through a sampler. And before the sampler was what? H star of minus t right this was the actual processing if you do a 1 by m of z what is this overall filter right that is 1 by sh z do you agree okay so that's actually a 1 by sh of z okay so that's why it's not surprising that uh, See, this one will be what? What will be the, how can you model the, uh, the, the PSD here is what? For noise. What is the noise PSD there? Yeah, SH of E par J theta, right? That was the PSD, okay? So then you run it through 1 by SH of E par J theta, what will happen? You mod square it and divide, you see, it will become, PSD will become 1 by SH of E per J theta. Okay, so that's why it's very natural that the sigmas, the variance of the real or imaginary part of n prime of k depends directly on the the one denominator, I mean the reciprocal of SH. Okay. So we did all that and we found the figure of merit for zero forcing linear equalizer to have this very simple form. Demon square of x. What is demon square of x? the minimum distance between two points in your original signal constellation from which s of k was drawn okay so that's the demon square is very easy to compute okay times 2 by n naught and i had this notation for what I, what is the arithmetic mean okay what is arithmetic mean 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi 1 by sh of e pi j theta dt okay so this quantity Right, this quantity is is the variance of the real and imaginary part of n prime k. Right, that's the variance. That's where the factor two comes. Okay, so if you look at just PhD, 
will only have n naught. The divided by two comes because of the real and imaginary component. Okay, so any questions on this? Anything that's disturbing you about how this is going to be done? So if at all you want to implement something like this, when can you really implement? It's the first question. Okay, so when can you really implement the linear equalizer in this case? Yeah, so that's that's one problem. That's from a performance point of view. Just from existence of one by m of z, since it's loosely minimum phase, since m of z is loosely minimum phase, all the zeros and poles are on or inside the unit circle, right? Zeros can be on the unit circle. So when you do 1 by m of z, what can happen? Poles can be on the unit circle. So what can happen because of that? It can become unstable. Okay. So but definitely it will be an implementable type filter. So how will you implement it? 1 by m of z. Is it is it FIR or IIR or what is it? Yeah. This yeah. So if you take m of z as an FIR filter. Supposing m of z is FIR, then 1 by m of z will be an IIR filter. So in general, m of z may not be FIR or IIR. It can be a mix of both, right? So you mean what I mean? Okay. So it can be IIR in general. Okay. So it can have both zeros and poles. So when you do the reciprocal, in general, you might get both FIR and IIR. But since it's minimum phase, right? It's easy to implement always. Okay. There are poles on the unit circle, so it might might cause some instability, but it's okay. It's not a it's not too crazy to imagine implementing 1 by m of z. And there are some poles on the unit circle. Okay, so so you finally you get uh, you get a reasonable implementation, but the variance will blow up if one by S H of e pi j theta is not integrable. Okay, right? So if you had poles on the unit circle, if you had so if you had zeros on the unit circle for S H of e pi j theta, right? Then may or may not happen. So in most cases it will exist if you have only isolated zeros. It's not a problem. 1 by S H of e pi j theta usually will integrate. Roughly, some at least it will not blow up too badly. Okay, but if you have S H of e pi j theta being zero for a for an interval of theta, then it will definitely not exist. You can't integrate. Okay, so but anyway, I mean, there might there might be cases where it blows up even because of zeros. So okay, so that's the story. All right. So this is zero force in linear equalizer. So towards the end of this class, we'll take one definite example and we'll do all the three equalizers together. So I don't want to do an example right now. Then you can't compare everything very nicely. Okay. So the alternate, the next structure we saw is what I called zero forcing decision feedback equalizer. This is a non-linear equalizer. Okay. So that's why we call the previous one linear equalizer because this is clearly non-linear because it's got a thresholding device inside the filter. Okay, so it clearly becomes non-linear. Okay, so what's the structure here? Z k goes through. Okay, so you do one by m of z. You kind of implement it in the feedback form, in the way you would do a IIR filter implementation, right? How, how do you do an IIR filter implementation? Okay, so if you think of, uh, you, you put it in the denominator and you do the outputs get delayed and then sample. So if you do it that way, you would get a m of z. Minus one in the denominator. Okay, and then you do a plus minus here. I'm sorry, it's always done. Okay, and then you move the slicer inside. Okay, the slicer goes inside. Okay, and this I'll call x. Okay. okay, once the slicer goes inside, everything becomes non-linear, but it also becomes Stable. Everything becomes stable. There's no question of instability once you have the slicer inside. Whatever happens, as long as the inputs are bounded, outputs will have to be bounded. Because output is a slicer output. Okay, it has to be bounded. Okay, nothing can blow up anywhere in the middle. Okay. So that's the zero forcing decision feedback equalizer structure. Okay. So so we would like to come up with a, a nice expression for what x of k would be, and then find figure of merit. Okay. But the problem here is. You have to worry about slicer error. Slicer is a non-linear part, and it's not very easy to deal with that as convolution or anything like that, right? So you can't you can't happily do an expression for x of k because it depends on the past decisions that were made about the made about the symbols, and those could be erroneous. And if it's erroneous, then you have to and it's all discrete, so it's a little bit confusing. So one way of avoiding all that is to assume that the past decisions were error-free. Okay. So at those instances where the past decisions were error-free, can you compute an expression for x k, and can you find figure of merit for those instances?
okay and you can show over a series of uh, long long series if you have a reasonable probability of error there will be lots of instances where the past instances past decisions are error free if m of z is not doesn't have too many tabs and all that so it's not too difficult to imagine that okay so you make that assumption so the assumption you make is past decisions are error free so technically the thing we compute is valid only for those k where s k has had k minus 1 s had k minus 2 and all are error free okay past decisions are error free So once you do that, x k is very easy to compute. What will be x k? Okay, this is z k minus what? Okay, z k minus s at k convolved with. This thing m minus one. I'll call it m minus one k. What is m minus one k? It's the inverse transform for m of z minus one. So if m of z was one plus m one z plus m two z in z power minus two, okay, z inverse so on. What is m of z minus one? We simply move the minus one here. So it simply this becomes just m one z inverse m two z. Square so on. So this k is this m minus one k. Okay. So what is z k now? Is s k convolved with m k, right? <coughs> okay. So all the components that that are involved in this m of z minus one in this convolution will get cancelled. Okay. The first is plus n k. Okay, so this requires careful. I mean, it's easy to see. I don't. I don't want to spend too much time on this. But you can see that everything, all of these guys, which were in the in the previous convolution, will go away. The only thing that will be left out is S K convolved with delta K. Okay, so you can write M M K as delta K plus M minus one K, right? So and then you do the convolution. You see, S K convolved with M minus one K will come. S K convolved with delta K will come. S K convolved with m minus 1 K will cancel with this because I have assumed all past decisions are error free. The only thing will be left out with that. Okay, so you get easily here this to be equal to under this assumption, this will become S K plus n K. Okay, so now the figure of merit is trivial to compute. Simply what? T min square x divided by the usual noise variance, which is n naught by 2 gamma square. Okay, so you get 2 gamma square divided by n naught. Okay, so q of root gamma by 2 would be a very accurate measure of, reasonably accurate measure of probability of error. Okay, the problem is we have assumed past decisions are error free. You know, past decisions have errors. This is not a good measure. But when there are no errors in the past decision or those instances, this is a This is a good measure of probability of error. Okay. All right. So once again, this is the sigma square for real or imaginary part of n k. Okay. So n not by two gamma square. How do you compute gamma square? But this so gamma square is related to S H of e pa j theta. It's actually what? Let me do a little bit of a manipulation to show you how you can relate this Z of uh, the figure of merit from this to the figure of merit from linear equalizer. Okay, so what is gamma square? It's E X P one by two pi integral minus pi to pi log S H e pa j theta d theta. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I want to write integrals in terms of 1 by S H of e pa j theta because I want to compare with the linear equalizer, right? So because that that involved an integral of 1 by, okay? So I want to do 1 by S H of e pa j theta. So then what will happen? What will happen? Yeah. So if you do 1 by inside the log, it will become minus. So e power minus will become 1 by e power that. Okay, so I can write this as 
1 by exp right 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi log 1 by sh of e pa j theta d theta do you agree right so basically this becomes 1 by the geometric mean of sh of e pa j theta okay so you can imagine this integral is likely to be smaller in value than the previous integral right so that's something we showed geometric mean is always less than the arithmetic mean also it, also you can see you're taking log of 1 by sh okay so if even if 1 by sh is blowing up fast log is going to slow it down a little bit okay so so you can see the advantage is visibly there but even in theory you can show what this will happen so 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 let's compare the two figures of merit for the le the figure of merit was what d min squared x 2 by n naught what arithmetic mean of 1 by s h e pa j theta okay for the zero forcing decision feedback equalizer what is it going to become d min square x 2 by n naught what geometric mean of sh of e pa j okay and since you know geometric mean is less than the arithmetic mean in general definitely this figure of merit for the zero forcing dfe will always be greater than or equal to the figure of merit for the zero forcing linear equalizer which is what you want which means the probability of error is going to be lesser in general most cases Yeah, so to take care of this past error problem, you can go through some work and show that it's not really a problem. Okay, so that requires additional work, but you can show this, this is a meaningful comparison. Okay, so there are several ways of doing it. Another way of showing that this is a meaningful comparison is what? Take several cases and simulate and see that it works. Okay, <laughs> so that's one thing. But this in theory also, it's possible to actually show that uh, the past errors, see, see, it depends on the number of taps, right? Number of taps and you see, it's if you make a few correct decisions the probability of getting the next correct decision is it's, it's correct this is valid so it's a question of how many how, how often will you make mistakes every mu times or something and that probability is quite less even if you assume a reasonable probability of error overall the probability is less so you can you can show some properties like that also. okay so that's the that's the final comparison okay so remember what was the figure of merit for the mlsd Okay, we didn't have a simple expression, but it was d min square by what? Sigma square. So what was sigma? Sigma is the same as sigma square is the same as n naught by 2 gamma square. But what is d min square? It's the minimum distance of the minimum weight of the error event, right? Minimum possible weight for an error event. So it's not very easy to compare this with this. But we have some bounds, right? So using some bounds, we can say some things. Okay. So, so we said uh, so in general, if you compare the three, you'll see that the MLSD has the maximum figure of merit. So assuming demon square is the same as what? Assuming d min square is equal to d min square of x, if you do that, then you'll see MLSD has the maximum figure of merit, right? This is also n naught by 2 gamma square, right? Did I say that right? Yeah, these two. Okay, so maybe these two will be equal. So maybe. Okay, so. So this is not. Well, there is a. So this is this this can be shown to be equal to the match filter bound, right? And the match filter bound is different. Now, what is the match filter match filter bound? It's uh, it's d min square x times 2 e h by n naught, some such thing. Okay, so it's so it's it's a little bit stronger than this. Don't don't think that this is the expression that you will get even for the match filter bound. So you can you can show that in general the MLSD will have the largest figure of merit, and then you will have the zero forcing DFE, and then you will have the zero forcing linear equalizer. Okay, so of course these are approximate computations. It's not exact computation, but this is a good computation to do. 
and in practice it works out to be very similar okay so what we're going to do next is to take a very simple example of a very simple m of z then try to come up with these equalizers and what they look like what, what's going to be the actual figure of merit let's see if there's some comparison can be made okay so that's what we're going to do next and the example i'm going to come up with is i'll pick m of z to be take a very simple example 1 plus alpha z inverse okay and we'll say alpha is between 0 and 1 okay so maybe we can even take it to be positive negative doesn't matter okay it's a real number between 0 and 1 okay so you see m of z is monic causal and minimum phase right because i picked alpha to be between 0 and 1 okay so the first question is how will the mlsd behave can you compute figure of merit for the mlsd okay so we'll start with the mlsd first the viterbi algorithm Com try to compute its figure of merit and then we'll go to the linear equalizer and the other things okay so if you want to compute figure of merit for the uh, mlsd you need the minimum distance error event okay so for that you need the trellis okay so let's do the trellis okay so i'll assume bpsk okay i'm sorry say x is plus minus one okay so if you do bpsk we'll do two stages and you'll see it's the thing will be minimum distance error event will be reasonably clear from two stages okay the trellis is going to look like this okay minus 1 what's the output <laughs> minus 1 minus alpha okay okay if it's plus 1 what is the output 1 minus alpha okay right so if a plus one here one would give you plus alpha minus one would give you minus one plus alpha okay so that's the trellis so you can once again write it okay so now the next thing is to find the minimum weight of the error event okay so there are, there are several error events here okay so there are some eight there will be some eight eight different error events you can try to go through and compute the distance for each of those error events okay so let's see you take this following error event okay which i'll draw in red what's the metric for that error event distance 8 alpha it should be square and all that no? okay okay how do you compute the distance okay so you have to look at the dis difference of the output between these two branches what is the difference it's actually two right two so you square it plus what the difference here which would be two alpha and you square that as well okay so you get four times one plus alpha squared okay okay right so just for uh, just for fun we'll take one more error event and try to compute its metric and then after that we'll conclude that that's the minimum possible metric okay so of course it's not the right computation but uh, it's a reasonable computation to do okay so this is the error event that i want to take okay so the blue guy what is the metric for that Two squared. Do you agree? The difference between these two branches is two, and the next one is what? 
again 2 alpha squared ok so you get 4 times 1 plus alpha squared do you agree ok ok so so that's your uh, so so from this we can make an intelligent guess that demon square for this is going to be 4 times 1 plus alpha square ok so that's just a guess may or may not be a very good a very good answer but that's the guess ok so if your noise variance n naught by 2 gamma square is some sigma square then this will work out to demon squared by n naught by 2 gamma square ok so gamma is not very readily computable right so how will I compute gamma I have to tell you what sh actually is ok so we will assume sh to be what shall we assume we will assume it to be 1 plus alpha z inverse ok so it has to be what gamma square times m of z times m star of 1 by z star how do you compute m star of 1 by z star from this it will be 1 plus alpha z do you agree with that right you are doing 1 by z star what happens to the star you are doing m star again right so it becomes the conjugation will go ok so we will simply get 1 plus alpha star actually it is 1 plus alpha star z ok so but alpha I am taking to be real so it becomes 1 plus alpha z ok so so, so most power spectral densities in rational form will look like this. You'll have a, you'll have a certain real, mostly real, term with z inverse, and the same thing will become z in the other form. Okay, so this is something you can use when you do spectral factorization. Okay, if somebody gives you SH of z, and you have to do spectral factorization, you can use this form and minimize your work. If you don't want to do that, we'll simply take it to be equal to this. Okay, if you do that then so there is some catch here about energy in m i have to be very careful about that so so suppose you find so we'll take gamma square to be 1 okay just for simplicity simply take gamma square to be 1 and this is my sh of z so now if you have to compute the match filter bound what will the match filter bound be What's the formula for the match filter bound? Okay, I'm sending only one signal, right? So it will become demon square of x times energy in m, okay, which is actually e h by gamma square. Okay. So in fact, in this formula, e h becomes equal to energy in m, okay, which is 1 plus alpha square. Okay, so because gamma square I'm picking as 1, so it works out to just 1 plus alpha square ok so you will see the numerator becomes demon square which is what 4 times 1 how did I get this 4 demon square of x demon of x is 2 right because plus minus 1 it is 2 so if you do demon square it is 4 and energy in m is 1 plus alpha square it is 1 alpha 1 plus alpha square right divided by sigma square ok which is the same as before so n naught by 2 gamma square I pick gamma to be 1 so it's just n naught by 2 sigma square if you want okay all right so this is the mf bound and what was <coughs> gamma mlsd the exact same thing okay so you see in that in this case the mlsd gives you the match filter bound so what does it mean when if the mlsd figure of merit is equal to the match filter bound what does it mean how did we derive the match filter bound assuming no ISI so what it means is in this case when you have just one tap ISI the MLSD can completely get rid of ISI and give you performance which is equal to that of no ISI ok so it may not happen in general it happens in this case 1 plus alpha z inverse if you have some other channel for m of z it might happen that gamma MLSD can never be equal to gamma MF ok in which case you know that you will always suffer a loss when compared to the ISI free case ok but that is ok in some cases it might work out that gamma MLSD is equal to gamma MF which means you can get to the ISI free performance but if you do MLSD if you do not do MLSD who knows what happens okay, if you do MLSD that is what is going to happen 
all right so that's the first bound we have established for the figure of merit for the sequels okay now for the same setup i want you to do derive the structure of the linear equalizer and then find the figure of merit the zero forcing linear equalizer i'm sorry so what do i mean by structure of zero forcing linear equalizer what's that filter right I'll write down that filter and then derive the figure of merit okay try to use some knowledge of dsp when you to avoid integration okay so you can avoid integration you what how do you do the integration 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi sh of e pi j theta d theta is what from dt of t you are going back to the the zeroth term the coefficient of z bar zero okay so if i give you sh of z you don't have to do integral to find the arithmetic mean and all that right but now we have to do 1 by sh of z so you have to do the 1 by sh of z and find its zeroth term first coefficient that will be equal to the integral so you don't have to do the work if for rational case it can be done very easily of course if your sh of e pi j theta is not convertible to a rational z transform then you have to do the work and stuff but otherwise that work is not needed avoid that work Okay, so the structure is really, really simple. You have zk coming in. Simply filter with one by one plus alpha z inverse to get xk. So how will you write this filtering in time domain? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So no, I just want a difference equation. that's the most useful thing in implementation type thing no what's the difference equation relating xk and zk oh my god what's happening man <laughs> don't give me such don't give me such cash yeah ha ah, so what's xk xk is zk minus minus what alpha xk minus 1 not zk minus 1 okay, is an ir filter okay so the difference equation will work out you have the difference terms in the left hand side okay this is how you might want to implement it in practice okay of course you can convolve with the unit step but probably not a very maybe that's a better way of doing it honors okay, this is the way you do it okay when will you have stability problems for this filter for what type of values of alpha alpha equals 0.2 will you have stability problems for what type of alpha yeah when alpha is close to 1 i picked alpha on the on the real line right 0 to 1 when alpha as alpha becomes close to 1 like 0.99 0.9 we'll start having stability problems from the theoretical point of view from practical point of view what will happen start having really bad effects because of quantization see ultimately you can't implement 0.99 accurately multiplication by 0.99 accurately you're going to represent it at some fixed point as it keeps squaring and cubing you, and you have to keep track of so many previous expressions your accuracy will take a severe beating in fact your poles will shift sometimes okay the way in which you're implementing so stability causes a lot of problems in this kind of implementations okay so then you do a slicing right fine this seems simple enough 
do a slicing and find S at K. Okay. Now for the figure of merit, what do you need? On the top you have d min square of x. That is just 4. It is no problem. Times 2 divided by n0. Okay. Right. n0 by 2 is your sigma square. Right. So maybe you can think of that as sigma square. So don't get rid of it. But then you have the arithmetic mean of 1 by sh of e per j theta. So how do you compute that? So the nice way of doing it is to look at 1 by sh of z. What is 1 by sh of z? 1 by 1 plus alpha z inverse times 1 plus alpha z. Okay, and then you have to compute this term's first coefficient, the coefficient of z plus 0 in the expansion of this. How do you do an expansion here? You have to do what is called a partial fraction expansion and for that it is useful to write everything in terms of z inverse, right? So that is the next step. So you write everything in terms of z inverse, you get z inverse 1 plus alpha z inverse. It is also common to write it in 1 plus alpha form. Okay, So it is so it's common to take the alpha common out and then write it as 1 plus 1 by alpha z inverse. Is that fine? Okay. So now if you do partial fraction expansion, what will you get? How do you expand this in partial fractions? So what are the two denominator terms? 1 plus alpha z inverse and 1 plus 1 by alpha z inverse. What should go on the top here? 1 plus alpha z inverse. In the remaining terms you should put z equals alpha Okay, so what do you get? No, not z equals alpha, z equals minus alpha. Okay, so you put z equals minus alpha, what do you get? Yeah, you should have 1 by 1 minus alpha square. Okay, that such an expression has to come. Okay, 1 by 1 minus alpha square. Why should such an, why did I say such an expression has to come? Because I know when alpha becomes close to 1, various things should go wrong, right? So I should have something like 1 by 1 minus alpha square, okay? So otherwise it won't work, okay? So things should not converge. When alpha is 1, the series should make no sense, okay? So that's how it should work. So the other part will be what? Minus 1 by 1 minus alpha square. Really? This is what you get? Have we taken care of this divided by alpha? This is what you get? So it works. Okay. So what is the coefficient of z plus 0 in this term? Okay, be careful in the expansion because the two terms will expand differently because your region of convergence is mod z greater than alpha. Okay, so don't if you are expanding alpha by 1 plus alpha by z properly, you can't expand 1 by alpha z also the same way, right? There should be some confusion. Yeah, so it has to be anti causal. Okay, so one term will contribute, the other term will not contribute to the z plus 0 term. Am I right? Okay, go ahead and do this carefully because it requires some precision the way in which you are doing it. Okay, so One by one minus alpha square. Okay, so that seems believable to me. Okay, 
coefficient of zeta zero in this expansion has to be one by one minus alpha square. Okay, so from there you can compute. Okay, from here you compute coefficient of zeta zero to be one by one minus alpha square. Okay, and that is the arithmetic mean of one by s h zeta j theta. That has to be the arithmetic mean, right? That's how we compute one by two pi integral. Which thing? Okay. So this is this is one by one by one minus alpha square. Okay. So and this will have to be equal to the arithmetic mean of one by S H of epa j theta. Okay. Why is that? That's the simple DTFT formula. Okay, go back and look at it. Zero term is the integral, right? So that's how it works. So here I should put what? One by one minus alpha square. Okay. So if you want, you can write it differently. You can write it as four times one minus alpha square divided by sigma square. Okay. So sigma square is n naught by two. Okay. The same sigma square I had for the MLSD and the match filter bound. Okay. Okay. So you see, while the MLST and match filter bound are giving me four times one plus alpha square by sigma square, the zero forcing linear equalizer is going to give me a is going to give me a figure of merit which is four times one minus alpha square. And al as alpha tends closer and closer to one, the ratio of these two figures of merit will really blow up. Okay, and the zero forcing linear equalizer will go for a toss. If alpha is equal to one, what's the figure of merit? Finished. Half probability. Okay, so you can't do anything. You might as well. Toss a coin and decide what SK was. No point in doing all these things. Okay. So clearly, all these things are borne out. So while this analysis might sound very approximate to you, in practice, it's very useful. You can do it quickly. It's no big deal in doing the one by SH of Z. You can, once you have a reasonable model, you can find it, and you'll know how well your linear equalizer will do. Okay. Pretty much, and it's a good model. It'll tell you the exact way in which things will work. Okay. So it's pretty good that way. Okay. So the next step is to do the Decision feedback equalizer, and with that we close this class. CF DFE. So once again, I wanted to do the structure and structure and do the figure of merit for this. Okay, so the structure is going to work out as ZK plus minus slicer here. Okay. And you have m z minus one. What is that filter? M z minus one. Alpha z inverse. Okay. So x k, s hat k. So if you have to write it in time domain, what is x k? Z k minus alpha s hat k minus one. So that's what. So notice the subtle difference between this and the In the linear case, linear case you had minus alpha x k minus one. So here you have x s hat. Okay, it's not x hat. Okay, s hat. Okay, which is a different uh, thing, and that will make all the difference in the world, assuming s hat is accurate. Okay, so if you do that, it will work out. Okay, so what will be the figure of merit here? Okay, so you will simply get four by sigma square, right? Okay. Okay. 
So you see, you notice the subtle difference. I want you to pay attention to this figure of mine. There's a lot of mess message here. So what's happening? In the MLSD, what did we get? 4 times 1 plus 1 plus alpha square. And match filter bound was 4 times 1 plus alpha square. DFA is doing what? 4 by just 4. So DFA is losing a little bit when compared to MLST. So what, what is why is it that it's losing? It seems to be doing the same thing, but why is it losing? Okay. So that's where you have to look closely at the ISI and some distance that the ISA provides. Okay, so MLSD actually uses the ISI to the best possible effect. What is DFE doing? It's getting rid of the ISI and then deciding based on only the individual symbols. So that's the loss of optimality in the DFE. Okay, so the zero forcing DFE is not as optimal as the MLSD. MLSD takes care of the entire sequence and extracts everything that the sequence can give you, while the DFE is going to throw away the See, it subtracts alpha times the inverse, right? That actually holds some information depending on what you have. You might be able to use it here in the trellis, right? What the DFE does is to simplify complexity, it does just simply throw, throws away that information and simply makes a decision on what the symbol is available. So, because of that, there's a small hit. It's not, but it's not as bad. It doesn't become unstable like the linear equalizer where it gets a 1 minus alpha square. DF, well, unstable in some cases, but DFE just does 4 by sigma square. It loses out on the extra benefit to be gained by using that extra ISI information. Okay, so that's the only thing. Okay, so this is a nice example in which you can see how there is these three figures of merit nicely tell you the story that's actually happening. This MLST, which is as good as the match filter bound, and then you have zero forcing linear equalizer, which pays a penalty because of the inversion, right? It 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 does it inverts and gets rid of the ISI, but it filters the noise also with the inverse because of that there is noise enhancement and you get a problem. And the DFE while it does not have the problem of the linear equalizer in terms of noise enhancement does not use the ISI the way it is supposed to be used just gets rid of it and makes a decision which also supposed to, is supposed to be suboptimal and you get a slightly lower figure of merit. Okay? So that gives you a nice uh, story. A nice assignment to do next is the following. Repeat the same thing for the simplest all pole m of z. What is the simplest all pole m of z? First order m of z. How do you take it? m of z is pick gamma square to be 1. Okay, is that any problem? 1 by 1 plus or minus, it does not matter. So, 1 plus alpha c in u c. Okay. Okay, again, once again, take alpha between 0 and 1. Once again, take x to be plus minus 1. Okay, go through and derive the three structure. So don't start with the with the MLST. What will happen with the MLST? Yeah, so you can't do MLST pretty much, right? So MLST is reasonably ruled out for this case, right? How will you do MLST here? Can't do it. This is not not a finite type of finite type filter. So MLST does not hold, but you can compute the match filter bound. That is okay. You can compute the match filter bound. That is easy to compute and uh, you can do linear equalizer and addition feedback equalizer and figure out whether there will be problems in any of them, which one is better. It will give you a nice idea for what happens when you have a pole in your channel response, what happens when you have a zero in the channel response. Okay, So then you can slowly build up some intuition on how the equalizer, suboptimal equalizers behave. Okay, so we will stop here, pick up once again Monday morning 8 o'clock.